Congrats, you made it to part five. We are now ready to upload to FaceRig. Firstly, you do not need FaceRig open to use the importer. The first thing the importer asks for is whether it's a model or a background. So click model. Now the main dialog opens. On the top right, click to browse for the data file and click on your model folder and click OK. Oh, whoops, just kidding. I guess it doesn't like what I named the folder. Let me fix that real fast. OK, now a console window will open and run through the folder to assign everything. As long as they are named correctly, it will auto assign them. The first thing you may notice when it finishes is that it tells you that there is no camera node. If you have a bow named camera, then you do have one. And ignore this message because I don't know why it does that. It may also tell you that you have too many bones, which isn't a problem, so don't worry. Now on the main page, your model will have a list of materials. If you named them in Blender, the names should show up here so you know where to assign the texture. On the shader template, hit the drop down for each one and click metal and cloth, which will then open a dialog on the right panel. Going to the right panel, on the diffuse entry, click browse, then browse to the corresponding PNG file for that texture, which should have exported into your model folder with the DAE file. You don't have to create a target image because the uploader will automatically convert them. Assign the texture file for each object listed on the uploader. Now go to the animation tab and make sure all of the animations get assigned correctly. You should at least have idle one. If that's all good, click import and the console will open and import your model to face rig. Just a few notes. If you don't export your avatar in the default pose, then your animations will double up on themselves because it will think it needs to move them twice as far because your default pose is already in the position. If it says your avatar has too many polygons and won't import, you need to separate your mesh into loose pieces again and only join a few so that the max polygons in any single mesh group is 20,000. If the upload goes okay, launch FaceRig and verify your avatar, camera, textures, and poses are good. You can reposition the camera and re-upload it if it's not right. Once it opens, you will first need to select your avatar through the avatar menu. It's probably at the bottom. And then you can adjust the camera position. To adjust the position in FaceRig, you can hold Alt and scroll the mouse wheel in and out, or left click to rotate your position, among other things. If there are problems with your avatar, like the texture's wrong or movements don't look correct, you can close FaceRig and correct them. I don't know if you need to clear the model catch before re-uploading or not, but I like to clear mine just to be safe. To do this, you delete the folders with your model name in this weird path I don't feel like repeating, so here it is. I already made shortcuts to them because I'm lazy. For correcting the wrong texture, you need to figure out what one is the right texture, swap the names, and re-upload. When you uploaded the first time, it created the target image files, so go back to your FaceRig folder and find the incorrect one. In my case, the eyebrows aren't right, so I click the eyebrow one, copy the name, and delete it. On my model, the eyebrows actually share the texture with the ears and not the body, so I'll control drag the ear texture to copy it, then rename and paste in the eyebrow name. Now, when you go back to upload again, when you select metal and cloth, it will auto-populate the textures and have the correct texture already chosen. And look at that, it's fixed. Once your avatar is good, you can fine tune the movement sensitivity by going to the UI plus on the top right and clicking that, then going into advanced tracking configuration, then to the expressions unit tab, and you can adjust how sensitive each animation is. At this point, you are ready to use your avatar. If you want to have your avatar as a camera input for streaming, I'll first assume you're using Streamlabs, but it's not very different for the others. Go to add a source input, select the video capture device, and choose your face rig virtual camera. If you want the background erased, you will need to first go to Environments and FaceRig through the UI Plus option and select the Photo Studio green screen background. Or, if you're green like me, you'll need to select the white background and then go to Customization and Backdrop, then change the backdrop color to something that contrasts the avatar colors so that you don't become half invisible. Now go back to Streamlabs. Right click on the source, select Filters from the menu, Add the filter chroma key and put the background color as the filter color. You now have your VR chat avatar in green screen. That finishes up everything for getting your avatar in face rig. So thanks for joining me and I hope this helped you release your inner Twitch gamer. Like and subscribe!